Hi, Prof. Dev. Uh, it's truly an honor to speak with you today. Uh, I've been uh, following your channel for quite a while and now, and your content, especially your lesson on quantum physics and uh, your takedowns of supernatural claims, uh, has been a huge inspiration for me. And uh, I'm from Indonesia, where pseudoscience and religious claims disguised as science are unfortunately very common. Uh, and your videos not only help me understand science more deeply, but they also motivate me to start creating my own educational content, focusing on uh, exposing misinformation and, encourage, uh, and encouraging critical thinking. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. And uh, yeah. before we dive into the main topics, uh, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you and uh, what do you do? Sure. Uh, my name's Dave Farina. I'm a science communicator. I focus mainly on my YouTube channel, Professor Dave Explains, where I make tutorials, academically aligned uh, tutorials for students, as well as uh, videos debunking charlatans and disinformation in the science space. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for sharing. Now, let's move on to the first question, because I know you are very busy. <laughs> In many parts of the world, uh, including my country, it is common for people to use science to try to validate their religious belief. Uh, some even claim that modern scientific discoveries confirm what is written in the holy books. So what are your thoughts on, on people using science to prove religion, especially when they say that science confirms what, the, what scriptures say all along? Yeah, I, I certainly do see that in, in, in multiple cultures. Um, <clears throat> I think the problem is that in this modern age, the uh, the sort of raving preacher is not really a popular caricature anymore. It's not really possible to completely deny all of science because science is in our lives. Uh, the existence of technology is proof of the validity of science. So people who want to spew sort of a regressive script will now at times try to integrate science into it and say it's not the case that science is all wrong but actually science is right and it confirms the 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 lies that i want to push here and so it's not so much a disavowal of science but rather a distortion of science right uh, just uh lies about what science tells us in an effort to try to corroborate scripture or some other uh, thing that people are trying to push, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. A and uh, here in Indonesia, some people argue that using science this way can actually help people become more interested in both science and religion. So do you think there is any value or maybe danger in trying to bridge science and religion in this way, especially in educational settings? Well, not in educational settings. That should, in an educational setting, there should be no discussion of, of religion unless you're studying religious in an academic way. In terms of personal spirituality, I don't really see a problem with it. I don't believe in God, but if you believe in God and you believe that studying the universe enhances your admiration for this deity you believe in, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and in fact, right, it just as long as you're coming at it from the perspective of what is uncovered by the scientific process is what we know to be true. And then my personal spirituality has to, has to mold around that. That's not a problem, right? Science does not negate spirituality. It does not infringe on spirituality. It doesn't care. Science doesn't care what your spirituality is or what your personal beliefs are as long as you accept the, the fruits of the, of the scientific process. So that's everyone's personal business. Um, the only thing I would say is in a public school setting, you can't uh, invoke God, right? You can't say, oh, God created this, God created That's not how we teach students but uh whatever people want to have as their own personal spirituality it's not a problem to me as long as people are not denying science everyone can believe what they want yeah uh, that's a really interesting perspective thank you uh, it is definitely for me uh it is definitely a tricky balance between respecting people's belief and staying staying true to what science actually tells us mm -hmm. Still on, on the topic of science being misunderstood, quantum physics often gets pulled into conversation about the supernatural. People say quantum physics explain ghosts or black magic or spiritual energy, even though this idea mis, uh, misrepresents what quantum physics actually means. Now, w 
why do you think quantum physics gets used so often to explain supernatural things like ghosts or black magic? And how can we help people understand that this isn't what quantum physics is actually about? Yeah. So this is partially the fault of certain scientists and communicators that uh, have used language in the past that they thought would sort of entice the general public to learn about science, but it mm -hmm. actually has had um, the opposite effect. As we have been describing quantum physics using very mystical language um, that has then been appropriated by charlatans to, to speak in a manner so as to imply quantum physics is very weird, so it's magic. Therefore, any magic that I want to be real is real if I can describe it using the terminology of quantum physics, mm -hmm. right? And so the, the targets of this grift are people who don't understand quantum physics, obviously. And uh, so many of us don't, but uh, it, once you just learn the basics um, and then you learn the precise script they're using. So I have one video called Quantum Mysticism is Stupid, and it goes over all of these tropes, the deliberate misrepresentation of the double slit experiment to yeah. imply some kind of sentience for a particle. Right? It's just people who either don't understand what these experiments were or they do and they're just lying about them. Um, and, and it comes from, you know, there was this uh, documentary when I was a teenager called What the Bleep Do We Know? And oh. it presented a lot of this stuff and it did, you know, when, when, you, ha when you have these pseudo documentaries that have a narrator with a particular style of voice and, it's, and there's graphics, it can be very convincing. And then mm -hmm. people are attracted to the narrative and then it's downloaded into their brain as like some pillar of truth. And then and they're very combatant when they hear people explain what quantum physics really is. Um, they don't want to lose this shiny pearl uh, that, that they enjoy yeah. so much. Um, but it's really just about, for me, all of this is two things. It's providing people with basic scientific information so that they don't fall for the frauds. And then also going after the frauds and exposing their lies. So when they're, te when they're telling lies about quantum physics, this is a lie. Here's how we know. This is a lie. Here's how we know. Right. I want to uh, neutralize their script as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and speaking about your video i actually watched uh, one of your video when you where you explain or elucidate uh, the difference between the words uh, the word energy used in physics and the energy used by uh, some spiritual gurus so in your yeah. experience why do words like energy vibration or observer effect like you, the one that you mentioned before like the double slit experiment uh yeah these words are get misused so often in this context so what do you think about that yeah well there's two sides to it some of it is just genuine linguistic confusion and some of it is deleb deliberate misrepresentation of terminology for the for the confusion it's just that language is vague and words have multiple meanings and we use words metaphorically and so if you literalize the metaphor right if i say this room has good energy uh, mm -hmm. I, I can say that, but I'm speaking metaphorically. It doesn't literally emanate uh, electromagnetic radiation or, of a, yeah. or something like that. Um, I'm speaking metaphorically, but if you literalize it, then it doesn't make any sense. Or positive and negative, right? Uh, positive yeah. and negative energy, right? We can be we can speak about uh, but values for potential energy that have a positive or negative arithmetic yeah. value, yeah. right? Plus or minus. But yeah. positive and negative also mean good and bad. Right? Yeah. They have multiple meanings, right? I had a positive experience. I had a negative experience today. And so when you equate those two meanings and have crossover, that's where you get confusion, right? There's negative energy, positive energy. No, that's not, it's not like good or bad energy. That doesn't mean anything. Um, so there's genuine confusion, and I want to be charitable there, where people are just genuinely confused. But then there's obviously gurus who, who muddy the waters on purpose and, and use yeah. words incorrectly on purpose, uh, so they have to be exposed. Yeah, that's totally true. Uh, and uh, some people even say things like quantum tunneling explain ghosts passing through walls, or quantum entanglement explain telepathy or black magic. What is your take on that? Like, can real quantum phenomena explain the supernatural or is this just a misunderstanding of physics? 
So there's two sides to this. One side is just acknowledging that these are quantum phenomena. They pertain yeah. to quanta, not to yeah. macroscopic objects. Macroscopic, uh, macroscopic objects do not exhibit these effects, right? You and I have wavelengths, but the wavelength yep. of an object as large as a human is something on the order of 10 to the negative 30 meters, right? It's, yep. it's so beyond negligible. Whereas for something like an electron, that's so tiny and has such a small mass that the wave like nature of the particle it competes with the particle nature they're equivalent right so yep. this works for quanta it doesn't work for a ghost or whatever macroscopic object you're you're yeah. pretending exists whether you're pretending it's massless or it has ethereal mass or whatever you're making up it just doesn't work right there are rules that pertain to the quantum world that pertain to the quantum world only because of this the the, the size and scope of the of the phenomena we're dealing with so that's part one Part two, because because those gurus would say science is so closed minded. Oh, you're just ignoring it. OK, demonstrate what you're talking about in a rigorously empirical way. Make a quantifiable, make a quantifiable prediction and then do a, an experiment in a controlled environment and demonstrate for me the phenomenon that you're pretending exists. They yeah. never do it. And then there's famous yep. people, you know, James Randi is past, but like there are people who will always uh, challenge these people to to substantiate their claims, demonstrate your telepathy to me in this controlled environment where I'm going to control all the variables and I, so that you can't pull off this uh, this grip. They always refuse. They're offered a million dollar prize. They always refuse because they know that they are lying. Um, yeah. So part one is just understanding quantum physics enough to know that what you're saying can't be true. But then the other side is if you're still insisting it must be true, show it to us. Show yeah. it scientifically. You can't do it and you'll never try. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for breaking that down. It really helps clarify yeah. how these scientific terms are being twisted uh, to fit narratives that just aren't supported by evidence. Science doesn't need to care an ounce about religion. Science can completely ignore religion. Religion, on the other hand, would be wise to pay attention to and accept science.